Braden Darsky. Today, I'm going to show you some wonderful epiphanies I've been blessed with on how to craft this poker chip into some beautiful coins. I love this clock, this coin clock. It's like, especially how it's on a poker chip, which attaches value to it. It's like, where do you spend your time? How much time are you going to spend here? How much time are you going to invest in something? Also, because it's a craft, you can pun on it. Like, you got to make time so you can spend it properly. You got to make time to properly invest it into something. Or how to make this golden coin. The gold coin and the silver coin are made the same way. The YouTube play button coin. This coin and the silver one and the golden one are all made the same way. The only difference is the colored tape. Similar to the coin clock, you can write or draw anything that you want. And I'll show you how I was blessed with these itty bitty cool cross and heart templates. I recommend prayer. You're gonna need some poker chips. Cardboard from your favorite cereal box. Pen and paper. A good pair of scissors. A reliable knife. Duct tape. Scotch shipping tape. These are letter stencils. I got mine at Michael's. I'll provide a link in the description below. A pyramid die. A glue stick. Let's start with a coin you can write or draw anything on. So take a poker chip and your glue stick. Apply glue to the back of the poker chip. And then press down the poker chip on a piece of paper. Then cut it out. The glue is just to keep the piece of paper on the poker chip long enough for you to draw and then apply tape later. I recommend starting with the 12 then going down like it's just easier to eyeball and center. It's just easier to eyeball and cut stuff in half so Doing the 12, then the 6, then cutting that in half and lining it up and like putting the 3 in the right spot. And then the 9 across from that. I'm actually lining up the 3 and the 9. The l I'm lining up the 9 to the 3. Now the 11 has got to be the next hardest part. Lining up the 8 with this letter K that's right above it, and then put, I'm lining the letter K with the 10, and that's how I lined up my 8 and my 10. Now, in, in this example, I unfortunately put the 6 a little too high, but it's close enough that you get the general idea. Now I'm actually taking the next stencil size up and using the seven off of that to get my hands for the clock. Now three o'clock is actually very important to me because I'm Catholic and that's a, it's around the three o'clock hour is when we believe that Jesus died for us. Then I'm gonna place down my Cleater Scotch shipping tape. 
And even though this piece of tape is purple, I want to, I'm doing that because it's just easier to see on camera. But if you're doing this for real, you'd probably want to do clear shipping tape for the whole piece. Get your knife and slit some, it's just easier to fold the tape down to the back of the coin in slits. And it looks better this way too. Whenever you get a little bit too much, you just snip it off. Now, the, on the top of your coin now, there's like a whole bunch of itty bitty ways that the back of your coin and tape off the back of your coin can get caught. So I recommend one final piece that kind of like just covers, covers all the seams. It makes it a lot harder for it to peel. And then I actually am peeling the tape just slightly away from the edge and cutting it away from the edge. Later on, I'll show why you don't want to line tape up to the edge of the coin. And there you go. The only difference between the coin on the left and the coin on the right is the one on the left is done entirely with Scotch shipping tape. Now let's do the gold and silver coin. You really only need about this much tape. I'll do it on both sides so it's easier to see here. And if you got too much, just tear it off. That's about as much as you need. If you get any more tape than that, then you risk getting a bulge on the back of your coin. The more tape you get, the more bulgy your coin's gonna be. Here's a side by side to show you how much bulge. See, the one on the left is like when I when I was learning how to do this, and it's just so bulgy. I mean, it still looks good to me, but it definitely looks better with less bulge. And then slit and fold down. That's And then again, one last piece to kind of like seal it up. Just cover all the seams and resist peeling that much more. This just makes it so much more resistance to peeling. And again, the only difference between these two coins is one on the left is done entirely with silver tape. Now for the YouTube play button coins. This 
This is going to be the background. Sometimes there's going to be a bump on the, depending on which side of the poker chip you're on. It's right there. And if you run into that bump, that's fine. Just flip the chip over and go to the other side. Ah, smooth. Nice, nice and smooth. And then trim that tape. Trimmy, trimmy, trim, trim. And get some cardboard. You're gonna chase your poker chip over the cardboard. You're gonna cut out that nice cardboard circle. And then fold your circle of cardboard in half. And then mark the seam so it's easier to see. And then fold it perpendicularly, go in the other direction, and then mark the seam. And this is just to make it easier for lining it up and eyeballing it. And then trace your pyramid over it. And then cut it out. You may want to put something between the coin and the table if you care about the surface of your table. And then clean it up as best you can. And then duct tape the edges of the triangle you just cut out. Now I've wrapped just the tiniest bit going on to the adjacent edge. That's my visual cue from Crafter Beraden to tell Editor Beraden to give God thanks. Like, thank you God that it's working out so well. Thank you God for the epiphanies. Thank you God that it's all coming together. I just love it. I love this coin so much. I'm just cleaning it up there. I'm trying to show how I'm going to get most of the piece on one side, but I've, I'm always trying to aim to get that corner. I'm going to need just a teensy bit more.
Now I'm going to add a piece, a tape, a strip at all the points of the triangle. I'm going to slit this down the middle. So it's just easier to bend back onto the back of the poker chip. Now this is going to make your the cardboard want to pull away from the poker chip. But not to worry, because once you apply the second piece of tape, that won't be a problem anymore. Kind of looks like something out of Iron Man. And you're gonna take your piece of next piece of tape, and I kind of line it up with the triangle, but at the same time, I'm also trying to get it a little bit of an overlap. So with my thumbnail, I can kind of shove just a little bit down. I'm trying to highlight here how this piece of tape is gonna hide a lot of the seams. How your final pieces of tape on the cover are gonna hide a lot of the seams. Here I'm just showing there's a bit of overlap. Snip it away. Snip, snip, snip. Same deal, I'm going to take that piece, do a little bit of overlap, try to get my thumbnail, push it down in there as much as I can. While it's still looking good. Like, I'm not trying to get it on the white bit. Now, this is just a bit too much tape, so I'm going to trim it down. Because I don't want to make it any bulgier than it needs to be. Then you just apply your third piece of tape. Then apply the last piece of tape on the back. Again, just slightly trim it away from the edge. And if I can peel it up with my thumb like that too easily, then it's got to trim down. So again, the difference between these two coins is everything on the left, save that one piece of white tape, is red tape.
Next, let's do the wee little templates. So you're gonna trace your cardboard. Once you make these templates out of these wee circles and you know they're gonna fit, Then fold your cardboard coin going like the printed side on the inside so you can actually draw on the outside. If it's fighting you, then you can use your scissors as a bone folder. It's so much easier to draw half a heart than a whole heart. And then draw half a cross. Now make the arms twice as wide as the base of the cross. I'm gonna make the base of the cross red here. Because when you unfold the cross, then the red is gonna double the length. And then you just gently cut out the cross. I was really struggling with this little bit of cross. Let's cut out a heart now. I guess you could use this piece if you wanted to, but I don't recommend it because this part is so flimsy and unreliable. So we're gonna glue the poker chip. Put it on paper. Cut out the paper. Then we're gonna trace our templates on there. It's beautiful. Same deal with the cross, you just put your cross down and trace over it. Now I wish I could show you how you gotta be careful with your tape and your seams. Because in real life this just doesn't really look that great. I mean on camera it looks good, but the seam going down the middle, it just really, it just obstructs too much of the actual image and takes away some of the visual quality of it and makes it less aesthetically pleasing. That's why on, on this purple cross, I try to line up the edges of my transparent tape on the outsides of the cross so it wouldn't actually pull focus or, or detract from the quality of the cross. When you're drawing something on, on the piece of paper on the back of the poker chip, you gotta remember that this poker chip has a little bit of an indent right here, and that's what happened to me on the heart on the right. It's, I was tracing my heart and then I, I got caught in the indent. Sometimes when you're cutting and slitting and folding down, you're, it's just not gonna cover the coin 100% of the time. Like, I did a whole bunch of these coins, and you'll occasionally get coins like this that just doesn't quite cover the entire surface area of the edge. I'm trying to show how the transparent tape, it 
It's more susceptible to peeling. It's just not a strong quality of tape, but it's transparent. So, you know, it's got a trade. It's you're trading back and forth. Like you can't have very strong transparent tape. It's just not realistic. So just something to keep in mind if you're using transparent tape, that it's not the strongest tape in the world and it's a lot, it's more susceptible to peeling and tearing. Now we're gonna take a chip and what happens if you were to cut the final piece of tape on the edge of the tape and this is why I don't like tape to the edge of my coin. It's more susceptible to getting caught in your pocket, just living in day-to-day -day life. I'm just trying to simulate with my thumb like the tape's gonna get caught over time, and then as it get as it catches and peels up, then more tape, more sticky surface area is gonna be susceptible to getting caught and peeling up, and it's just a vicious cycle. And that's why I cut just a, a wee bit away from the edge. Okay, I love you guys, bye. If you're curious about my Lazy Susan revolving table, then you're more than welcome to check out this other video in the description about this wonderful epiphany I've been blessed with. It's how I was able to get this shot.